The Lost Saucer is often referred to as a forgotten Croft classic. It's the show that doesn't seem to get mentioned all that often when people talk about the Sid and Marty Croft catalog of programs, most of which aired on Saturday mornings during the 70s. It's a show that I, however, remember very well. In fact, I still remember the Friday evening sneak peek that was broadcast the evening before all of ABC's great new kids shows would premiere. ABC and the other networks did this type of show every fall to build up excitement about their new Saturday morning lineups, and it certainly worked with me. In fact, way back then, those Friday evening sneak peeks were almost as awesome as Christmas Eve. As I look back at ABC's 1975 lineup now, there are a lot of hits and misses. Well, I guess more hits than misses. The only show that I absolutely do not remember is Uncle Croc's Block. Is that Charles Nelson Riley there? Anyway, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Once I got over the absence of Super Friends from ABC's lineup, which would eventually reappear a few months later, I have to say that my favorite of all the new shows was definitely The Lost Saucer. Like all of the Croft shows from that time period, the show had an absolutely amazing theme song. I have no idea who sang it, but it was really phenomenal. Like any good theme song does, it told the story of what happened. A Fi and Fum, played by Ruth Buzzy and Jim Neighbors respectively. Two time-traveling robots who land in 1975, and just because they're friendly time-traveling robots, they invite young Jerry and his babysitter Alice to come inside for a tour of their fancy spacecraft. However, once the police and fire departments, as well as a large crowd, begins to gather outside of the craft, they panic, and in a haste, take off with Jerry and Alice still on board. Back in 1975, I didn't think much about this, but this show was way more star-powered than most of the Croft shows, or any other kids' show of the era, for that matter. Jim Neighbors, of course, was well known for his role of Gomer Pyle on both The Andy Griffith Show and Gomer Pyle USMC. He had also hosted his own variety show and was a frequent guest star on The Carol Burnett Show. I have no clue what was going on with Neighbors' career that led him to take the role of Thumb on The Lost Saucer. Maybe the primetime offers had dried up, I'm not sure, but whatever the reasons, I'm grateful that he didn't feel that he was above starring in a children's program. Who knows? Maybe the Crofts decided to spend a little more money on the talent than they typically did. They were still riding high on their success of Land of the Lost on a competing network. Maybe, just maybe, the Crofts made an offer that neighbors couldn't refuse. That would also explain why Ruth Buzzy accepted the role of Phi. Buzzy, of course, found fame in the late 60s on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Here she is with Artie Johnson. Alright, let's get back to the actual show. Like many Croft shows, it feels like they made more episodes than they actually did. Just a single season is all we got, 16 episodes in all. But during those episodes, we actually got some pretty decent ideas explored. Now don't get me wrong, they weren't always explored well, but the show wasn't afraid to, as Wikipedia states, make social commentaries where dealing with extremes such as a world where names and faces were replaced with numbers or another episode where machines were outlawed due to a global energy shortage or another episode where the world's population had grown lazy and obese because robots did all the work. The show also gave Buzzy and Neighbors an opportunity to do things they loved. Jim Neighbors got to sing on more than one occasion and Ruth was able to reprise one of her characters from Laugh-In, which in The Lost Saucer turned out to be one of her creators from the future. And like other Croft shows, there's a familiar trope at play here. Someone is swept away from their home, and despite efforts to find their way back, they are never successful. Sadly, Jerry and Alice never do make it back home, or even change their clothes for that matter. By the way, the thing behind Jerry there, I apologize for the fuzziness of this picture, but it's a dorse. Yep, half dog and half horse. A dorse. Of course. So I mentioned earlier that it felt like there were way more than 16 episodes of this show, and that is most likely because the Croft brothers were masters of leftover TV. 
What I mean by that is they seem to find a way to reuse their shows over and over. So the following year, the Croft Super Show with Captain Cool and the Kongs premiered. Guess what? The Lost Saucer was part of that show's lineup. And then over the course of the next seven years, you could find episodes of The Lost Saucer on the Croft Superstars syndicated program that aired in the afternoons daily on many UHF TV stations. Sixteen episodes played over and over for an entire decade. Whatever the Croft brothers paid neighbors and Buzzy for their efforts, I'd say they got their money's worth. You know, I can't in good conscience make a video about the Lost Saucer and not say something about Babysitter Alice. She is, without doubt, the world's worst babysitter. Let's think about this. Flying Saucer lands somewhere near the home of the child that you are supposed to be watching, keeping an eye on. It's not like he runs away from you and into the Flying Saucer. No, he stays right with you. And these two goofy robots are beckoning you to come inside. Any good babysitter knows that this is probably not the best of ideas. Come to think of it, back when I was a kid, I had some pretty bad babysitters, and I'm guessing that 100% of them would have probably stopped and said something like, eh, maybe we shouldn't go into that spacecraft. During the height of the popularity of the VHS tape format, remember those? Rhino Music, of all things, released two episodes as part of their World of Sid and Marty Croft series. At this point, the tape itself is a collector's item, and you'd likely pay a pretty penny for a copy. But the nice thing is, is that you don't have to. Many of the episodes are right here on YouTube for your viewing pleasure. Simply type in the Lost Saucer in the search box, and hours of intergalactic zaniness are yours for the taking. Speaking of YouTube, if I can point you to another video of mine, it would be this one. Jim Neighbors was really one heck of a guy. This video will help you understand why I say that. Alright, one more picture. Again, let's go with the world's worst babysitter, Alice. Alice, sweet Alice. What in the world were you thinking? Okay, now it's your turn. Were you a fan of The Lost Saucer? Leave your memories in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and share with your friends and family on Facebook and Twitter. While you're at it, why not subscribe to my little channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. In fact, there are a couple of other really good videos right here that you can click on and enjoy right now. Go ahead, I won't mind. I'm wrapping up here anyway. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.